Hey everyone, it's Ali Maz. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna guide you through a 45 minute flow that's got a little bit of heat to it. We're gonna work on the core. We're definitely gonna get into the lower body. It's a little bit more for an intermediate practitioner, but you do you, listen to your body, you know the drill. Let's get started. So you're gonna shift onto your mat, bringing big toes to touch, knees wide apart, taking claw hands, walking them forward to elongate the spine. And you really wanna go a little further than you think here to root the fingertips and pull the body weight back. You're gonna lift the elbows and the upper arm bones, and then if you can, drop the forehead down towards the floor. And we're gonna start our grounding here. So, it might have taken you a lot today to get onto your mat to create the space for you. So I always like to start with an intention. What brought you onto your mat today? Keeping the upper arm bones lifted, the center of the chest melting down towards the floor. Begin to take deep breaths in as though you were embodying that intention. Inhale is going to fill up the sides of the ribs, really opening and expanding the back. And as you exhale, there's a softening and a heavy quality through your hips. Let's take two more. Slow inhale. Big exhale, perhaps through your mouth this time. One more. Inhale. What are you breathing toward in this practice? Exhale. Now we're gonna to start to move from child's pose. Take your right hand beside you, left leg out, and you're gonna sweep the left arm over the ear. You can point this left toe. Exhale, you're gonna move through your child's pose and come up and out on the other side. And you're coordinating breath and body. So it's inhale as you move through, the core is activated, and then you're opening up this big exhale, the chest starts to spread. Inhale through the center, Exhale, opening up. You might even like to cactus this arm and spread the chest. And if you want, you can start to pick up the pace a little. Flowing through, down and up. Down and up. One more time, on to the left. Fingertips plant, right arm opens up, and I want you to stay here. This elbow's gonna cactus back, and you're gonna do three circles up and around, maybe tilting the chin up towards the sky. Inhale, exhale. Good, inhale, reaching up and over. Take it more as a side bend now. This is called gate pose. I'll show you from this angle. You've got this gorgeous side body length, bringing in lots of stretch in through the ribs. And then as you exhale, slide it through. Core is contracting here as you come up and around. Other side, I'll spin to face you and you've got three circles. Warming up and opening the shoulder girdles, creating space for the energetic heart center, and really working the breath and the capacity of your lungs. And then stretch into the gate pose from the left, tippy toes all the way through the fingertips, reach, reach, reach. And as we exhale, come back to child's pose, hips come back. All I want you to do here is take one breath, and exhale, feel yourself land, feel yourself arrive in your space, carving out this time for you, your body, the unification of your mind, body, heart, spirit. Root the hands. Let's find our first downward facing dog. So tuck the toes, spread the fingertips wide. See that the creases of the wrists are parallel to the short end of your mat. Grip your mat and begin to lift hips up and back. And give yourself lots of grace here in your first dog. So bend the knees, draw the chest toward your thighs. As your palms root down, feel your forearms, the lower arm bones hugging toward one another. This is gonna create some structure and stability in the upper body. And then wrap the upper arm bones away from one another. See how that draws the shoulder blades together and starts to spread the chest. Might feel nice to do a little pedal, pressing one heel and the other heel down. So I've designed this flow for us today to feel 
energetic, to feel capable, to feel embodied, and really finding compassion for yourself. So it's fine if your downward facing dog doesn't look the way it did yesterday. It's fine if you're sore, stiff, and it's also fine if you haven't made it to the mat in a while. See if the breath can get a little louder than the thoughts. You begin to walk your feet up towards your hands. Step your feet hips distance apart parallel. You can measure your stance by taking two fists between the feet. And then grab a hold of opposite elbows. Drop your chin to chest and let the upper body hang. So you're just tractioning out the lower back, letting the head get heavy. Lots of blood flow into the brain. And we're going to begin to flow here. So release the arms, chin to chest, pull the navel back towards the spine, and you're going to roll up bone by bone. Imagine like you had two heavy weights in your hands. So you're opening up the back body, coming to the top. As you arrive, chest is proud. You got to your mat. You're here. Feel your feet. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Let's start to move. Exhale, bow and forward fold, hinging at the hips. Inhale, halfway lift. Take the breastbone forward as you send the tailbone back. Exhale, bow and fold and step back to your first high plank pose, top of a push-up position. Now, you know you have options. Knees can come down, forearms can come down. Modify as you need. Otherwise, tuck the toes, juice up the legs, and look forward slightly. Now, we're going to do a little run here with the knees. So you're going to go right knee tap, left knee tap. So little tippy taps with the knees, look forward, already starting to engage the core and starting to turn on the muscles of the legs. It's important to keep your shoulders over your wrists. And as you do these taps, you're just grazing the rubber of your mat. One more time, right, left. Make sure you're not holding your breath. And then take both knees to the floor, inhale. Exhale, let's lower to the mat. Untuck the toes, take your hands behind you, jazz hands, fingertips spread wide, hug the legs together, inhale, lift the chest up. As you do this, roll the shoulder blades together, really lift, lift, lift through the center of the chest. And then you're gonna sweep the arms in front of you and you're gonna go for a little swim. Inhale forward, exhale around. We're stealing this little move from Pilates, starting to strengthen the upper back and heat up the column of the spine. One more time, lots of arm circles today, getting the shoulders warm, and then place the hands underneath you, tuck the toes, push down, lift the knees, and see if you can go slowly up, like reverse chaturanga and downward facing dog. Okay, that's the first flow. We're gonna work it again a little quicker, step, hop, jump, front of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, breathe out and fold. Sweep your arms high above your head this time, drawing a circle, and then flowing all the way back down, hinging at the hips. Halfway lift. Exhale, bow and fold, step it back, high plank. Good. Tip taps with the knees, eight, seven, six. Breathing, five, four, three, Two, one. Inhale, straighten the knees. This time, keep the knees lifted if you can and you want to. Bend the elbows and come all the way down. Untuck the toes, hands come off and they reach three circles. With breath, inhale forward. Exhale, swim around. Imagine a little resistance here as you draw the hands closer. Inhale forward, exhale around. Plant the hands, reverse the chaturanga, so tuck toes, knees lift, pull navel away from the floor before you even start, and then push, and then downward facing dog. Pause for a breath. When things get a little challenging, it's nice to come back to the intention. Step hop or jump front of your mat, halfway lift. Last time with this flow bow. Sweep it up, inhale, grow tall. Exhale, fold it back down. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, step or hop back high plank. Each time we find a little bit more of an advanced situation, 
tap, but the taps are going to go across the midline. So see how you're finding a little twist here through the middle. This is engaging the obliques. You might hear your crunchy lower back do a few little clicks. So it's just, it's gentle. It's a little tip tap, feeling sides, oblique, sides of the obliques work. Good, one more. Lift both knees back up, exhale, take it down. Last time with arm circles, untuck toe, swim. Inhale forward, exhale, swim. We're gonna stay here, inhale forward, and we're gonna interlace the hands behind the back. Draw the knuckles together, draw the palms together, gentle lift to a half locust pose. Don't want the arm bones to sink forward, so pull those bad boys up and lift your chest, lift, lift, lift. Exhale, release the hands, reverse the chaturanga, and press back downward facing dog. Slow breath in, and release a little heat as you breathe out through the mouth. Step hop or jump front of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, bow. Make sure your feet are hips distance. This is gonna matter for our little chair pose now, so bend the knees. Sit your butt way back. Look at your feet and see that your second toes are parallel. They point straight forward. Now take your arms up and you're gonna hook onto your elbows and pull them over your head. So we're doing a lot of work here. The first piece of work, as you know, is legs. Feeling the fire crawl up the legs. You can lift all of your toes to feel a little more engagement. Sit back in the heels. Then you're working upper body. So the pulling back of the elbows, the spreading of the chest, and now grow tall. Inhale, exhale, sit a little deeper. Now we're gonna move with this shape. We're gonna come up and press the right knee up to find balance. And we're gonna come back down to the shape to find heat. Lift the left knee. I find squeezing the opposite butt cheek is gonna give you the support. Go back down. And you're just doing a little flow here, flapping your wings. Inhale down. Exhale, use the power of the breath to come up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Try not to drop the chest here. Try to keep everything really lifted. Shoulders, legs, core, everything's working. One more time to the left. Lift, then down. Holding with the right knee up. Okay, we're gonna kick back. So find first, left foot roots down. Begin to extend, right leg back, both arms back. Airplane pose. Reaching through the back toes, out through the crown of the head. Option to keep the arms back, that's what I'm gonna do. If you want a little more sauce, you can reach the arms forward. Totally up to you. It's gonna load a little bit more on the spine, so you really have to work core. You wanna lessen that, hands to hips or to the back. Soften the left knee now. Take a gentle little touch down with the back toes. Lower the right knee, untuck the toes. Find yourself in your first low lunge. Kind of feels like a treat, doesn't it? You've done all of that work, the legs are warm. Perhaps the gaze goes up. Should we do some arm circles here? Why not? Okay, draw the elbows back. Three circles. Bend the elbows as the arms come back. See how that lifts the chest. Maybe look up. Notice how your day is getting better, a little brighter, because you committed to yourself, you got onto the mat. Doesn't always get easy like that, you know? Some days we don't choose it, myself included. Take your hands down, lift your right knee. Check me out, we're going back to our friend, high plank, but the left foot is gonna step back and it's gonna cross over the right leg. And then we're gonna go like this, tap it, take it back, tap it, take it back. So left knee is coming to the upper tricep, squeezing the obliques, let's do four. Good, take it back to this little resting perch, bend the elbows, untuck the toes, join the legs. Give me cobra, a mid-sized cobes, and then press back downward facing dog oh, and breathe it out. So sequencing, it's a little fancy. 
We're still getting back to basics, finding our way into our downward dog. Take the breaths you need here. Look forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or jump. Inhale, half lift. Take your time. Exhale, breathe out. We slow the breath down. We slow time down. Come back into present moment awareness. Lift up, reach. And let's pause in Tadasana. Take your hands beside you. <sighs> Try to stay still. I know it's, you kind of want to see, like, your clothes are still on and, you know, the things are all in place. But see if you can stay still. Just feel the energy moving through your body. Go back to beloved chair, working the heart rate. We go down. We go up. We're going to move faster. So instead of taking the elbows above the head, you could. But if you just want to flap your wings, you can do that. Every time you hit chair, make sure that the knees are tracking. That's a part of it, the tracking of the knees. Butt back. Squeeze the core in the butt as you lift the knee. Each side, one more time. Lift. Down. Chest stays lifted. Take it down and then lift up. Hold. Find the balance, kick back, airplane. See that the left hip is drawing down. Face of the left thigh is looking at the floor. Heart and butt try to be in the same level. Stretch back or reach forward. Stretch back or reach forward. Feel the toes extend. Full body activated, you are capable. We are energizing. You are embodied, soften the knee. Lunge, you can pad the knee if you need. Right knee is over right ankle. Sit it low, high lunge. Nice little landing place. Let's reverse the circles, shall we? Go forward and as you come forward, bring body down. And then this is kind of a sticky part for the shoulders. As you go down, see if you can go, ooh, turn the palms open and around. So you go forward, up and around, moving through all the cobwebs in the backs of the shoulders, working the legs as we do so. Up and around through all the sticky bits, hands come down, high plank, Right foot perches on top of the left ankle, boom. And then we go tap, take it back. Tap, take it back. Squeeze the right oblique, shoulders are over wrists. Use the breath, keep it there. Keep the ankles sealed, chaturanga, halfway. Untuck the toes, join the legs, lift up, upward facing dog. Pull the arm bones back, downward dog, breathe out. Nice work. Nice work. Pull navel to spine. Bend the knees gently. Draw the chest to thighs. Look forward to hands. Walk, step, hop. Front of the mat. Halfway lift. Don't think too much about it. Bend the knees. Sit your bum down. Chair. This isn't chair. Boat. <laughs> this is boat pose. Different than chair. Equally as challenging. Couple options here. This boat here, perfect. Option two, hands off. Option three, straighten the legs. Notice when you straighten the legs, the whole body does this sewing machine effect. That's great, means we're working. Option one, stay here. This is Navasana. Option two, Ardha Navasana. We take it down, we go lower and lift. Lower, Ardha half boat. Lower, lift, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. The other option is take the hands behind you. Gives you a little bit more of a spring. Couple more, down and up. One more, down. We're gonna stay here and up. Fingertips together like you were pondering why you chose to do this class. It's hard, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't wanna do core, but we're doing it for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, hands up, you're gonna tap the opposite toe. Find your way through. See if you can bring your foot to your hand. 
for four, for three, for two, for one. Feet together, butterfly the legs, and breathe out. Slow breath in. Slow breath out. Just as quickly as the moment can intensify, we can down-regulate just as quickly. Slow the breath down, leave all that stuff behind, get right into the moment. Come up, swing the legs behind you, back to dog. And we'll find our way into another flow. Right leg comes up. Bend the knee and stack the hip. So we just did a little core now we want to open the hip flexor. So right knee is lifted, stacking the hips, stretching through the groins. As we exhale, pull the right knee in towards the forehead, curl the spine, pick it up, inhale, stack, and then pull it straight back in, squeeze. Inhale, lift it up, stack, pull it straight back in, squeeze. Now from the squeeze, we're going to mountain climb so instead of the tippy taps in the knees, you're going to pull the knees forward. It can be slow like this, or you can run it out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Kick it up. And then step forward. High lunge. Back knee stays lifted. Arms pick up overhead. You know the flow is spicy when the lunge poses feel like a rest, okay? So you're in your lunge, headlights of your hip bones shining forward, arms are over your head. Front knee is bent to a 90 degree angle. As we exhale, all I'm doing is reversing and pulling the weight into my back knee, right leg comes straight, arms are overhead. We go forward. See if you can keep your head on the same level and you whoosh back strengthening the quadriceps, stretching the psoas. Back into lunge, inhale, exhale, whoosh it back, straight to the right leg. One more time, come forward. Maybe you're a little deeper in the lunge now. Exhale, pull it back, stay here. Hug the inner thighs like they were magnets toward the midline, squeeze. Now we're gonna straighten the left leg. I'm staying high on the back toes, bowing over right leg. It's kind of like a pyramid pose hybrid. If you wanna blocks underneath the hands, grab them. Staying high on the back toes, pull the right hip back. Draw the left hip forward. Inhale, spine goes long. And then exhale, chin to chest, forehead towards the shin. Modify any way you need. Perhaps you do want the back foot to come down. Perhaps you do want to shorten the stance to be more of a traditional pyramid. This is not a traditional flow. You can still find the simplicity of some of those postures. Stretching the hamstring, pulling the hips back. Walk the fingertips forward front of the mat, keep on claw hands or onto your blocks, begin to shift all the weight into the right foot, kick up the left for standing L. Standing L is again, hip square, push through the back foot, extend through the chest, and then take left foot behind the right. You've got crisscross shins. It's a fan favorite, the IT band stretch, chin to chest, plug in. Lengthen out the neck. Loosen the jaw. As human beings, we get a little overly identified with needing to stay in control. Life doesn't always work that way. We don't always know what comes next. And yoga has this beautiful ability of pulling us back to the present moment. And in the present moment, all you got is these crisscross shins, you're breathing, and you're okay. You're capable, you're here, and you're okay. Some of you are thinking, no, my IT bends are not okay, Ali Maz, and that's fine. <laughs> We're gonna get out of the shape now. I'm gonna bring the big toes to touch, release the shape. I wanna work that sequence. If I can remember it, on the left side, so flow. Inhale up, exhale down. Let's 
do a vinyasa. Just straight up vinyasa, halfway lift, step, hop, or jump through high to low plank. Your back bend of choice. Downward facing dog, exhale. Right away, left leg up, bend the knee, stack the hip, and then pull me in. Squeeze. You've got three of these at your own pace. Squeeze. Lift. Make sure you stack each time. Squeeze. Lift. And then step all the way up, high lunge. Lift the arms up. And we're going to do our little flow, high lunge and this sort of hybrid back lunge. So first, before we do that, make sure left thigh bone parallel to the floor, back leg straight, arms are up, and then you take it back. And you're popped high on that back foot. It's like a, a Barbie foot. Good, bring it back. Squeeze, take it forward. Bring it back. Good, with precision in your movement, Right now, all you have to do is focus on you, and that's such a gift. One more time. Come back. Now stay back. Stay back for a moment. Plug down the right big toe mat. Hug, hug, hug. And then as you exhale, it's almost as though straightening your back leg springs the body forward over the left leg. Set it up into your version of a hamstring stretch. Pyramid pose. Chin, chin to chest, bow. Relax where you can. These little moments of micro rest, micro relaxation. You're not meant to force your way through this practice, even though it's challenging. Still finding the balance of effort and surrender. Walk the fingertips forward, kick up the right leg, pause here, standing L. Right hip is down. Hug the inner thighs like there is a little pencil there. You wanted to squeeze it. Push, push, push through the back heel. Look forward, extend the spine, and then exhale, other side of IT band stretch. Now, blocks are great here. Side of couch, perfect. Place your hands somewhere up if the floor is feeling a little too far away from you. You can take a little crawl over to one side. I like that option because as I walk to the left, I feel that in my right side of the lower back. Send your breath where you feel the stickiest places of the body. Send the breath. The breath creates space, and it's really the spaciousness that when we leave the yoga practice, we go, ah, I feel better. It's the space you create. And release the feet. Feet are as wide as your mat. Heels in, toes out. Send the heels down. Turn the toes out. You've got balasana squat. Now, if you need, pop a block underneath your butt to take the pressure off of the knees. Otherwise, elbows brace the knees, open up through the center of the chest. We're gonna go back into a little bit of core work. You can always fast forward this part. <laughs> if you wanna go into a little bit more core work, let's play. So butt goes down. Legs go back up into Navasana boat. Squeeze inner thighs, remember, hold, hands off, legs straight. Now, arms are gonna reach overhead if you're coming with, and then exhale, arms are going down. That's the first one. Arms over the head reach, and down. Using breath, inhale. Exhale, if you want a little more, point the toes straight in the legs. Lift, and down. Lift, and down. Now you're gonna lift the arms, drop the right heel, hovering. Lift it up, hover left. Lift it up, you want another variation, hold the legs, you could Hold one leg at a time. Again, a little Pilates inspiration here. Good, couple more for four. Lift for three. Lift for two. Lift for one. Now leave the legs down there, turn the feet out. You're gonna go criss, cross, criss, cross for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hug the knees in and then curl over your legs. 
This is an underrated yoga pose where you just go like this. <laughs> so one of my faves, just close it all down. We're not on our backs yet. I know you wanted to do that. You wanted to roll back, didn't you? I see you. We're not doing that. We're gonna go back. Well, you can do that because it's your life and you have choice and agency and you can do whatever you want. But for me, maybe you, dog pose. We're gonna throw some warriors into the mix. Take your right leg high to the sky. As you exhale, bend the knee, stack the hip. We know her, we love her. Now we're gonna take right knee, right tricep, tap. Pick it up, and we're gonna take it across to the left. Tap, pick it up. Make sure you stack each time for a little extra zhuzh, and then pull the knee in, hug, 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 and then step forward, spin the back heel down, and arrive to another resting shape called warrior two. It's so relieving when we get here. Right knee over right ankle, thigh bone parallel to the floor, back foot parallel to the short end of the mat. Open the arms up, breathe. We love a good general form of the pose. This is how we learn how to find the alignment. And then we can get kind of wild with it. But right now, warrior two, straight in the right leg, Pull the hips back, right hand goes shin, block, or floor. I like hand outside of the ankle, that's a personal preference. You do you, left arm up, triangle. Looking up, maybe left arm over ear, love that one. Feels so good, that side stretch we were doing at the beginning of class. All the way up now, goddess, bending the right knee, right arm sweeps. Come up, bring the hands together. Pivot on the heel, toes face the left side of the mat. And then we're going down to the left. Check me out, right elbow, left knee, boom. Lift it up, boom, other side. So again, getting into the legs, a little bit of obliques. If it feels too tight to twist this way, try this. Try a little that, open it up, good. Lift everything, skandasana, turn heels in, toes out, skandasana. We've been here before together, haven't we? I know a lot of you have practiced my videos for many, many years, and I know we like this shape. It's nice to see you back here. Got a new outfit on, same space, good, lift up, and then walk it all the way back, come through high plank, now, we're gonna do a little kind of play on vinyasa again. Untuck the toes here on the tops of the feet. Strong, press down. This is why I said intermediate. Now lower the hips. Wow, upward facing dog, so really easy. No problem, love this. Tuck the toes, bend the elbows, chaturanga. Uh-oh, and then push back up. We will now have another option to do that, so I know you can't wait. Left leg up, bend the knee. We go stack and tap. We go stack, tap to the other guy. We go stack, tap, draw in, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Warrior two, spin the heel, open her up. I'm gonna spin to face you. You stay with the left leg in front. Slow the breath. If you can, breathe through the nose. In through the nose, out through the nose. Triangle. Straighten the leg, left hand down, shin block or floor. I have a weird left hip. Never told anyone that before, but I, it, this one just a bit sticky. So instead of going down, I actually like to do one of these. I'm up here. Nothing wrong with being up here. Right arm up. Instead of trying to like tweak it and get lower, this does not mean being good at yoga. No such thing. No such thing as mastering this practice ever. Being quote unquote good at yoga just means you're here, you showed up, you have a life, you chose this. You got a mortgage, you got a kid, I don't know, <laughs> do you? Maybe. All to say, life is stressful. So when we hit the mat, come to Goddess Warrior, means something. It means you chose yourself, not always easy. Come up, straighten, pivot. We're gonna do one of these, boom. You might like to come in a little bit, boom. 
elbow to knee. I just stopped explaining the pose. I just said, boom. Can you tell I used to be a dancer? I'm like, boom, clack, boom, clack. <laughs> There's no real words, it's just sounds. Good, and then when you come back over to the right side, heels and toes out, skandasana. Find your shape. I love this one for inner thigh opening. You could even open here, or you could bind if you wish. Take a few breaths and then come back around, high plank, one of that same vinyasa where you go high plank, tops of the feet, which maybe looks a little intense. It's not, it's the same thing. Push down, tops of the feet, and then just lower the hips. Pull the elbows back, then tuck the toes. Here's the cha challenging transition. Butt has to go up as upper body goes down, and then we press away oh, and come back to dog. Breath in, breath out. Breath in, and breath out. Okay, I know what we need. We're gonna do a pigeon. Take the right leg up. We earned it. Right shin forward, walk the left leg back, unless there's something that prevents you from doing this shape, you take what you need. I'm gonna teach you single pigeon, but you take what you need. Left leg long back behind you. Walk the fingertips closer toward you. We'll do more of an active pigeon today. If you wanna fold forward, go for it. Otherwise, we're gonna stay up. Up so much that maybe the hands lift. Knee to knee, hug in. Inner thighs are active. See how I'm not hanging here? I'm really lifting. Arms come up. It's a really nice stretch for the left hip flexor. We've been working on that guy all practice. So in order to get here to this moment, some of us like a quad stretch here, right hand down, left arm reaches around, picks up the foot. If you're reaching and it's not there, don't worry. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And then release. Okay, fine, maybe two breaths. You get two breaths. Feels so good. Release the head. And then we'll press back. Do what you want to. When you come through downward dog, you might want to try one of those fancy vinyasas again, or you might just want to stay static and find the breath. When you're ready, left leg up, slide left shin forward, pigeon pose. Now that you know where we're going, take what you need. If you are interested in the more active pigeon, the key here is imagining knee to knee, magnetizing, hugging in. See how the pelvis actually lifts. Good, and then hips are square. Two blocks beside you would be a nice way to work this pose as well. Arms go up, maybe chin goes up. And feel embodied. We live so much of our life upstairs in the head. Come down, crawl down, embody, feel the fingertips, the toes, the chest, the sides of the ribs as you breathe in. That's you, that's your aliveness. You showed up for your aliveness today. Good, come down for those two breaths. Start to elongate the exhale. So maybe four count inhale, six count exhale. It starts to tell the nervous system, we good, we can chill now. Well, that spicy stuff is, is over. Come up, sit down onto the left uh, butt cheek and extend the legs out in front of you. Give them a little shake. Good, flex the toes. You can move the flesh away from the sit bones. We'll just do a quick Paschimottanasana. Take the arms up. You can sit up on a block if you need a little more space and then exhale forward fold over the legs, any amount. And you can take this really active, pull the toes back, keep the spine long, or you can go a little more passive.
and then lift up. We'll take a seated twist, so extend the left leg, take the right leg over. If the hips are open enough, scooch the left heel in. You want both sit bones on the floor, and if you can't make that happen, no prob, just extend the left leg. Left arm goes up, goes across the right leg, we twist toward the right. Inhale finds the length, exhale finds the depth in the twist. And then take a little counter twist and change sides. Right arm comes up, length, exhale, twist, depth, look over the left shoulder. Rinsing out. Count of the twist over to the right. Go ahead and come back through center, lie down onto your back. Hug the knees into your chest. Now, if there's anything else you felt like you needed on your back, go ahead and take it. Happy baby, legs up the wall. Otherwise, we're gonna end today, soles of the feet together, knees dropping out wide, taking right hand to belly, left hand to heart, closing the eyes. And just noticing the breath as it leaves the body and re-enters. And if it's too intense for the hips to be here, you can switch the feet can go wide, knees can knock in. You're welcome to take as much time and as much space as you'd like here. If you do need to end your practice, you can wiggle the fingers and toes, stretching out in all directions. And find your way to a comfortable seat, placing the hands in front of the heart, bowing the head. Acknowledge your effort. Acknowledge what it took for you to get onto the mat today. Reminding yourself, affirming to yourself that you are capable, that you are alive, and that taking the time out for yourself, you are deserving of it, you are worthy of it, and you are better for it. Let's close with a deep breath in and a gentle breath out. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I will see you next time.